All right, hello wine drinking people. Today is the first day of June, folks. That's right, we've got our Australian Wine Week going on. That's, that's the Penfold shirt. We've got our Australian tasting tonight at Cafe Max. And then uh, Friday night, we still have a few seats left for our vintage Australian tasting where we ain't going back to 1996. We've got some Grace, Hill of Grace rather from Henschke. We've got some Tourbrek Run Rig, some killer juice going down this Friday night. Just a few seats left, folks. Uh, we'll fill those right up. It's only 75 bucks. you kidding me? That is a steal. Check out the entire lineup on our website. And, hey, we've got, we're have got we going to hear from Cheech today, man. I can't believe it. We haven't had a Cheech's accessory of the day in months. But uh, today we get to watch Cheech accessorize with some new items from Screwpole. But today we've got one of the top properties, well, one of the top producers in the world, Piero Antonori. And, uh, you know, Piero Antonori. Isn't he from Italy? These are California wines. What's going on here? Well, Piero Antonori started a joint venture uh, in Napa Valley over 20 years ago when uh, you know he went in with the Whitbread Brewing Company and Bollinger Champagne on this 1,200-acre property up on Atlas Peak and, uh, well, kind of uh, changed directions up here a few times. You know, this was called Atlas Peak Winery, and it was, uh, well, they used to make Sangiovese based varietals there. I guess they thought that, you know, Piero could will his magic on Sangiovese varietal into Napa Valley. But you know what? Napa Valley is about Cabernet Sauvignon, folks. And I think after a few years, Antonori found that out. And his, with his 600 years of winemaking experience that his family has, ding, the light went on. Cabernet Sauvignon, Napa Valley. Ah! And uh, now, well, they've renamed this property as of 2006 Antica, which means antique in uh, it, his native Italian tongue. And uh, one of the most beautiful places I have been to in Napa Valley. I had a dinner here that was hosted by uh, George Hamilton, the man with the good tan, and Danielle Steele, the uh, writer who writes all those love books, women. And uh, I'll tell you what, man, my wife was just amazed that she got to meet her. What an incredible setting, though. This property, the beauty of this piece of land is just amazing. Uh, we got to have dinner up in the caves. It was a little bit cold in there. But uh, like I said, I'll never forget the evening just because of the spectacular vista there and uh, George Hamilton while well, he was quite an entertainer and then the wines very good you know these Atlas Peak wines used to be fantastic and it took him a few years to get things right I think with the blend here but then when Mother Nature kind of lends you a helping hand like in 2007 the red wines absolutely spectacular from Napa Valley in 2007 in 2009 although maybe a bit spotty it seems like they got it right here you know the elevation goes up to about 2,500 feet here in this vineyard so a very high elevation vineyard so you know not the same as the valley floor. There's 15 different AVAs in Napa for a reason. And the Chardonnay here is a blend of five different clones of Chardonnay. And uh, you can check it out if you want to know the different clones. But, you know, the important thing to me is how this wine tastes. And it has got a wonderful amount of underlying, you know, uh, minerality to it. And a lovely uh, lemon citrus and then green apple kind of fruit. Lovely concentration, creme brulee notes, and a fine amount of acidity here. Really Burgundian style Chardonnay to me from Napa Valley. And uh, most excellent, one of the best Chardonnays that I've had at $29. We have one of the best prices in the country on this wine. The Cabernet Sauvignon, 100% Cabernet Sauvignon, by the way. No Sangiovese in here. Has this lovely black plum and currant berry fruit, densely planted. And you get wonderful concentration out of this wine. You know, I rated it just a shade behind the uh, Chardonnay, man. The Chardonnay impressed me so much. But, uh, man, this wine had supple tannins, a big and chewy wine, lots of everything, uh, fine herbs, dark cocoa spice showing up on the finish, and, again, lovely acidity here. You can see the European influence on these two wines. Some fantastic stuff. Check it out on today's offer. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying, remember, always drink the good stuff first.